I am Miguel Tan, co-founder and director of Mosaic Realty and Development Corporation. We're five in the family. I have two younger siblings and I'm the eldest sibling. So basically, like in every uh, family, I, since I'm the eldest child, there's a lot of expectations of me. And uh, this, of course, inclined me to work harder and to excel in some aspects, especially when it comes to academics. But unfortunately, academics wasn't really my, my strongest suit. So I was trained early on by my parents to actually join the family business. My father, being a second generation Chinoy, gave me the leeway to basically grow and uh, learn on my own. So he has the wisdom, he has the guidance, he have mentored me throughout my formative years, especially my mom as well. And they've been supportive in everything I've done. I was given that, that freedom to basically try things on my own, to make mistakes on my own, to learn on my own. And I think I'll always be grateful for that. And that's something that I would also bestow upon my children in the future. Watch me on Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart, only at CNN Philippines. today's generation of Chinois that beauty is found in the fusion of both modernity and tradition. For the fashion film, all you gotta do is to project in the camera, you can look away, and fix your bow. Play with your eyes if you want. Yeah, you just move. Everyone is joining the race, but only one is gonna win. Guests will be you guys! Share your heart and share your personality and have fun. This year, 2022, we really expect more exciting, more focused on the values of the Filipino Chinese ship. Mercedes Pair, I'm your next Miss Chinatown Philippines 2022. I was born and raised in Hong Kong and I grew up with my Filipino mom. Growing up, I studied with 99% uh, Chinese kids and then they would say, oh, you look different, I don't want to play with you. But as I grew older, they found me interesting because I'm different. And so now I take that as a compliment because they see that I'm different. I'll, I'll, I'll see that as um, I'm extraordinary. I think Miss Chinatown Philippines is someone that appreciates both Filipino and Chinese culture. And most importantly, she has a heart to preserve the traditional Chinese core values. And I believe I'm that person and I'm ready to be your next Miss Chinatown Philippines. And I'm very excited to represent the Chinoy community. Hi, I'm Miguel Lim, I'm 25 years old from Quezon City, and I am the next Mr. Chinatown Philippines 2022. So I actually grew up in Binondo. I am Chinese Filipino. I am half Chinese, half Filipino, but I don't like to say I'm half half because 
I'm not just half. It makes up the entirety of my identity. So my dad's pure Chinese and my mom's mostly pure Filipino. And the way I grew up, I would often be around my cousins, my extended family who are all in the Chinese side here. I also got to experience the Filipino side of my family, of course, because I would go home to the province every year and that kept me grounded. I knew that my identity came from not just one source, but multiple sources. I am the next Mr. Chinatown Philippines 2022 because I believe I have what it takes to defy expectations and surpass barriers. Hello everyone, I am Christine Ong. Tatia Hao or Tia Wang Ming Hui. I am 22 years old from San Juan City, and I am your next Miss Chinatown Philippines. Both my parents are pure Chinese, and as the middle child, I was more free as compared to my Atsi and my Shotty. So, of course, my Atsi, she was the firstborn, so she was more of the overachiever, and she was the one who my parents really looked after. While my Shotty, naman, like, they really wanted to take care of him, like, he was super baby. So, there was me, like, I always did different things, and like, I, I would always do things without telling them because I like keeping things to myself. Being the middle child, I was very spontaneous. I'm your next Miss Chinatown because I am courageous and I always go for my dreams and that is why I'm here today. Hi, I'm lovely Claire Lim, Wotiao Lin Aini, and I'm from Baguio City and I'm your next Miss Chinatown Philippines 2022. So my father is full Chinese and my mom is Filipina. The Filipino Chinese community in Baguio is very accepting. We are very simple people. Because Baguio is such a small community, everybody knows everybody. So it's just like a one big family of the same culture. I believe that I am the next Miss Chinatown Philippines 2022 because both cultures, Filipino and Chinese, in all aspects are beautifully merged in myself and I am the absolute representation of a modern Chinoy. Hi, my name is Lorraine Wong Ong Bun Hong, 29 years old from the Spina City. You're next Miss Chinatown Philippines 2022. I'm proud to be Chinoy because I believe that I carry with me the hard work, sweat and tears of not only my parents, not only my ancestors, but of all the previous generations of the Chinese community. To be a beauty queen is not just to be a face. You have to represent something and you cannot represent something that you are not. You don't say that I'm gonna do this once I become Miss Chinatown Philippines. You have to be that thing. Even before becoming Miss Chinatown Philippines, you have to be the person who you're trying to represent.
dance floor made of grass. Your blue eyes make me wanna make this evening last. Hi everyone, my name is Luca Araneta. I'm the pageant director for Mr. and Miss Chinatown Philippines 2022. Compared to previous years wherein we had the competition virtually due to the pandemic, this year is more exciting since we're having a comeback. We're actually going to have it on ground. It's going to be as exciting and as um, unpredictable. I got this feeling rising to the ceiling. Jin David, I'm the creative director of this year's Mr. and Miss Chinatown photo shoots. The concept behind the shoot basically came from the rebranding of Chinoy TV because this year Chinoy TV unveiled new colors which are green and peach which we used as the lighting for our first layout. The candidates did really well. Actually, some of them seem to be pros in doing photo shoots. And some of the candidates are already familiar to me because they're already like influencers. And I think you already know some of them. So it's something to watch out for. I got this feeling. Nilamon ng kakanood magdamag, lumamon ng uwi si Christy Patata na lumunin mo sa sarap. May something. Pag mahapdi sa balat, pwedeng irritation yan. Try Silka Green Papaya. Dahil ang tunay na sign ng pagpapaputi, kita in as early as 7 days. Good role model ka. Sign na yan. Silka Green Papaya. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. During pandemic, we decided to establish this company, Mosaic Realty and Development Corporation. We were toying with different names and different ideas. And then we were even laughing at ourselves because we were Jardin, we were Something about being small. Of course, the marketer in me said, no, it's not small, it's boutique. Miguel was into arts. He collected paintings. He knew both modern and classical artists, right? And then we said, okay, we're trying to put small pieces together and trying to form what? Something productive, like a masterpiece. So we said, oh, it's like a mosaic. Mosaic is basically small pieces that when you combine together, creates a larger picture. Our story was pretty much like that. We all have different backgrounds. They all come from different age groups. I'm very happy that we were able to meet up and come together and align our vision to actually do something and create something of value. We view it as a, as a culmination of our three distinct personalities, three different ideas coming together and forming something really tangible and something really to be proud of.
I'm Jardine Brian Wong, CEO and founder of Mosaic Realty and Development Corporation. Well, I was lucky enough to be in a household where my dad is really a pure Chinese. My mom is a pure Filipina. So I always say to my friends that I have the best of both worlds. Growing up, I'm very fortunate to live in a, in a household that's very supportive. My dad's really straightforward, hardworking, and passionate about everything in life. But my mom is really uh, the one that balances out the family. She's a very kind and generous woman. The balance of them really paved the way for us siblings. So I'm the third of four brothers and sisters. Uh, a lot of people have been joking that I'm the FCOO or favorite child of owner but I always counter that I'm the FP COO favorite pagalitan child of owner We are the pioneers of uh, exporting non-indigenous seafood products started out by my Grandpa? Well, early on, I think uh, my dad set the tone for us uh, in terms of really having that mindset to help the company, the, the, the family. And then it developed really into a, a notion that we really have to help. Uh, at that time, when I graduated, there was an immediate need in the company for me to help out. I still remember the day I approached my dad. It was a Sunday and I asked if uh, he wanted to have coffee. So he was surprised because I never really uh, asked him about uh, having a coffee date during a Sunday. Uh, and then while driving, that's the time when I opened up that I wanted to create my own distinct company because I'm thinking about my future. That's a time when he asked me if, if I can do it first and how will I do it. It was very clear from the onset that uh, there will be a lot of challenges. It took me less than a day to think about a partner. And this partner, the family is really close to us. My name is Jillian Ze. I'm the Chief Operating Officer and co-founder of Mosaic Realty and Development Corporation. My dad is actually a first-generation Chinese, uh, and my mom is actually a third or fourth-generation uh, Chinese. My dad grew up in a very, very poor household. He was not educated, and um, I, I think less than 15 years old, he mustered the courage to really escape poverty by coming to the Philippines and um, trying to venture into something that would bring back, you know, dignity and honor to his parents. In a very Filipino, Chinese, and traditional household, normally, a lot of people will say something about Yong Lam Kin Do. In English, it's loosely translated as putting more priority on, on the males versus the, the females. My dad was so worried that he wouldn't uh, bear a son and he made sure that the female, the first three, were well-trained. So that was a blessing in disguise. You have to imagine, my mom would check my assignments, all our assignments, every night. But at the back of my notebook, my dad drew up a chart 
on budget. So probably even at five years old, he gave us allowance already. Not because he was rich, but he wanted us to see the value of money, how to manage the finances. See that training, budgeting, everything was gearing up to be a businesswoman, right? But right after college, I decided to join a multinational company. So it really broke his heart. grounded me because you have to understand I have been away in the Philippines for close to a decade coming home to our family business was a good really transition plan before we set up Mose Imagine I lived in Capo probably a two lane street we were beside a creek that became unfortunately the neighbors dumping bin for garbage. So it was stinky, it was ugly. So that was the kind of household. So my mom raising seven kids, she was so worried. And then on top of it, my dad is a frustrated architect. Uh, we asked him before if he had the chance to study, what, what, what course would he take in? And he would always say architecture. So you can just imagine, you're scrimping on money and budget and resources. He never hired any decent architect, a good contractor. He did all the plumbing work, you know, the design and the, the building. So I, I guess that unconsciously built up to my appetite to be in the real estate sector. And even prior to Mosaic, my dad had a bit of um, investments in real estate. I think the stars aligned. I think one of the rule of thumbs that I always hear, when you have a business partner, you need to know what's at the back of his head. Parang you know this person from start to finish. I don't know Jardin from, from the start to finish. His dad and my dad were really, really friends for decades. But of course, with that interaction, you get to meet Jardin and all. And then his dad is also as petite as my dad, probably stands about five feet. Jardin is also um, uh, cute that way. So. And then I noticed, because I'm, I'm years older than, than Jarded, but I noticed even in college, this guy was really helping out his, his dad's uh, family business. And it's not as if taga pindot lang ng kaha or calculator. He was engaged in the day-to-day -day operations. Jordan had his hands really entrenched in running the day-to-day -day operations in the restaurant business. And of course, as business partners, we get to eat there, we get to interact with him, I get to see him, how he deals with people. He was ahead of his age. So when I approached Jill, so I said, Jill, I have a proposition. Uh, I knew in my mind that uh, you are looking for an opportunity to really hone your skills uh, and then really contribute to something meaningful. He said, Jill, you know how our parents run things and all, uh, it's in real estate. There's really no, no one who owns the real estate market. Why don't we penetrate it? We, let's do something differentiated. It was a brief, short, 20-minute meeting. I laid out my vision for the company and I said, I, I don't have anyone in my mind. Uh, I don't know who is deserving of my trust because, you know, I, I don't really trust so much and ever since my family and uh, their family have been together in almost a couple of businesses, all of it became successful because we really help each other, guide each other and uh, I was very happy that after three days, I think it took her three days uh, to uh, say yes because she had to balance with the family uh, whether or not they would allow her to partner with me. But I'm very fortunate that uh, she said yes. It might sound like it was not well thought of, but you know, the little things and then the little interactions and the frequent interactions um, that happened between Jordan and me, it made us trust each other that when the time came that he wanted me to be part of this uh, new venture, it was so easy for me to say yes. It's not often that you get to see somebody offering you businesses and telling you, jump in.
Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. The bigger company was already in real estate and uh, this is another real estate company so we had to make it differentiated. So we don't eat up the same pie of, of, of the market. Number two, we can't afford to pay for them. And he told me, I will only trust and believe you if you get your savings mo from your corporate career. When you have grit, I guess you're going to be all in. It's like, you know, you're in a, you're in a casino and you just push all the chips into the table and say, Let's do this because the idea is good. We see the market, There's, it's still big. We can still differentiate ourselves. So that's why we said, come on, let's do it. Miguel is, I think, one of the most persistent uh, guy that I would ever meet. He was a bidder in one of our uh, projects. And then the bid was done. We awarded a certain part of the construction to the winner. And of course, out of the seven or eight bidders, Miguel's company was one of the six that lost. And then we started to get calls that there's a certain uh, company and by this person leading that company who wanted to meet up with, with Jardin. Of course, our assumption was he wanted to set an appointment to turn around the decision. But we were so surprised. No, no, I'm not here to persuade you to change your decision. I'm here because I'm young. I wanted to learn where I made a mistake. Why did you not choose our company? Where could I have done better? So that was actually my intro to Miguel. I am Miguel Tan, co-founder and director of Mosaic Realty and Development Corporation. I was trained early on by my parents to actually join the family business uh, growing up uh, with my dad uh, as early as uh, 8, 10 years old. I was already going to the office, going into the business at an early age. It was uh, quite difficult at some point because my dad, uh, at his, at his uh, mid-40s, uh, he basically uh, suffered a heart attack. Being the eldest uh, child in the family, uh, it was very expected of me to take over the reins at an early age. So I joined uh, the board when I was already close to my teenage years, at 15 years old. It forced me to really think out of the box and to mature at an early age. You know, growing up in a construction environment uh, where where we build things, especially we're in the facade business in Fasclad. Our job is basically to uh, facelift the building. So we install glass, we install cladding uh, in the structure. So we were basically the face of the building. So of course, it takes a certain uh, imagination to make the building stand out. And when it comes to building facades, we take the approach of doing like an artwork. And which is why at an early age, I was fascinated with a lot of paintings. It sort of became my escape. A title is just a title. Anyone can be given a title. But it's how you, it's your ability to, to basically round them, round everyone up, manage their talents, and making the best possible choice. Because uh, for me, uh, being a leader, uh, you don't have to know everything. In order for you to be a good leader, you have to be a great follower. Funny, he always tells me that going to the meeting with me, because my style is I would let everyone meet in a, in a boardroom, even competitors. So he was early during that time, I remember. He recorded the, the meeting, shared the clip to me after, I think it was two months. And then uh, I began to question him why he wanted to be close to me. And so I said, this guy might, might be onto something. And, and I really view him as a 27, 26 year old version of me. So uh, when the time came that uh, we were about to finalize the uh, incorporation of the company. I really approached Jill 
and, and told him you, you need to meet this guy and, and take a look at uh, what his qualifications are. We, when we were forming this company, Jordan and I were contemplating we got to have one more guy or girl. And probably we needed somebody good in construction. So Miguel was not still in the in the in the radar. And uh, suddenly Jordan, really the, the credit really goes to Jordan. He said, you know why not Miguel? Miguel Tan. Here we are, uh, three of us uh, against the world, probably, <laughs> uh, working in true Chinoy fashion, working diligently and working really, really hard to fulfill our uh, promise of building ambitions. It is remarkable how life and how our lives are somewhat connected one way or another. At, at the moment, we're still all under 40. When you're younger, you're more passionate. You're closer to the ground when you're boutique. You get to do things faster. We don't have a very, very vertical um, organization. Being boutique, it's more flexible. You're closer to the ground. It means we get to analyze and talk to our consumers faster, more efficiently. Probably that's one of the skill sets, you know, being boutique is our advantage. Different ideas on the on the on the how would we call the the first building, but we wanted it to have a figurative and literal meaning. Okay, let's talk about it. We're casting our shadow. Nagsisimula tayo. We wanted to pick a place that you know the seasoned developers were not heavily penetrating uh, because we can't compete with their pockets, right? So we came up with the name Silhouette. We're slowly casting our shadow in the real estate division. Literally, we're slowly casting our way into San Juan City. When you're competing with giants in the industry, one of the things that I learned during my corporate field is how do you differentiate yourselves? You go to San Juan, you see a lot of, you know, mid-stories and high stories, 20, 30 stories. And then you see one story have 12 to 18 units. They try to maximize the value of the land by building vertically and making sure there are a lot of units being sold. We wanted to be differentiated in that game. So we came up with this one floor, one unit. 272 to 276 square meters. When you talk about that kind of space, very, very value for money, you suddenly feel that you've arrived. It's not just about the monetary value, but it's the lifestyle. What are you going to do with the 270 to 276? Because we're given a lot more options versus the previous generation. I can have a room for study. I can have a room for my pets. So you have a lot of freedom in that space. And it's about the generosity as well. You, you're coming from a pandemic where you want a bit of fresh air and all. We made sure that 270 degrees actually WTA, spearheaded by architect William T, made sure that 270 degrees of the perimeter space is glass. And then you have a very generous space balcony. And then you say, okay, why would we be able to compete with seasoned developers? We got to have some amenities. They have pool, I have a pool. We have a gym, I can compete because I have a gym. I have a yoga place, right? So it's what you see in developments with seasoned developers, you can find it here. Plus, it's one floor, one unit. That's something that, you know, not a lot of people can claim and developers can claim. And it takes a lot of grit for us to be able to do this. We're trying to attract like-minded people who want to set a stage for themselves. You know, for the silhouette, I want to build a community that values networking. And when I say networking, it's not as if you you know, in the old age na nakikinabang ka lang. I realize hard work is not sufficient to do well in whatever industry. You need to have to get, gain a bit of networking. I don't think it's all about hard work. I don't think it's all about getting your hands dirty. Sometimes you need other people to help you and to lift you up. That's the kind of community that I want to build. Not just for the silhouette, for the future projects that uh, we aim to do. It's very important 
and you have to really humble yourself. Jordan, Miguel, and I will always be the number one legacy of our parents. Even if tomorrow I'm able to build the tallest skyscraper in the Philippines, even if we can build the most expensive, the most luxurious flat, the most important legacy, I think, will still be the kids, the children. In Mosaic, Jordan occupies the CEO, the lead role. And then I handle the COO role, and then Miguel handles the directorship role. And from the onset, we made it clear the distinction of our goals. And we also need to recognize that all three of us are also managing other businesses as well. I am lucky that, you know, I am raised in this generation who sees beyond gender to be able to penetrate this kind of industry. And if you notice, a lot of the people in the real estate division, they're mostly male. I think I really give credit to how Jarden and Miguel's parents brought them up. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. On this ground, the silhouette will rise, casting an iconic shadow in the heart of San Juan. We are doing the groundbreaking of our maiden project, The Silhouette. As part of our groundbreaking ceremony, we are going to embed in the grounds of this 19-story tower, the blueprint which houses the duplicate land title, the elevation, and the original blueprint as designed by WTA Architecture and Design. What I really like about the Silhouette building is its uh, prime location in San Juan. So San Juan has been close to me because this is where practically I grew up. I've been living in San Juan for 20 years already. The location has always been its, uh, at its peak, especially with the 19-story building. You pretty much have unobstructed views since the highest building here is around eight stories. Our vision for the Silhouette would be a prime project geared towards young families for them to build the lives with. The Silhouette is not an ordinary project because it values privacy, it also values value for money, and it also values growth for the whole family. This is the venue where it's all gonna start for tonight. A lot of laughing, a lot of playing, a lot of singing. But before we enter the hall, I want to give you a bit of a tour on what's happening on the ground. This is the layout model and the module for the silhouette. On my right is actually a slew of panels. As you can see, we're trying to showcase the one floor, one unit and the different bedrooms. As we formally launch the most awaited, the silhouette. I'm very excited since uh, a year ago, uh, this was just conceptualized by uh, our partners. And of course, uh, it came up to this night already. We have a beautiful scale model inside the event as well. There will also be some uh, photos and snippets on how the architecture of each unit will be. The hard part starts now and uh, we will definitely be needing all the support we can get and all the help, uh, especially when we're about to really launch the Silhouette project. There's a lot of people coming in, jump back, full house. I'm also excited because my family is here to support me and uh, be a source of inspiration, encouragement. We're finally here, no turning back. It's uh, the end of dreaming and the start of doing things for us. Thank you. I think for a modern Chinoy, you need to be able to allow feedback to happen. You need to be able to recognize that you need help. It's not just you who will make things happen. I think being a modern Chinoy, you are proud of that you are blessed with two heritage, a Filipino and a Chinese heritage. You got to learn how to mend them well, marry them well, learn and amplify the strengths of each culture and also recognize where some are failing, not doing well, and then turn it around. Modern Chinoy is someone who is very dynamic, very flexible, especially uh, in today's environment. All of us uh, being, of course, Chinese, but we all live in the Philippines. So, like, for us, we consider ourselves also Filipino because of the culture that we share together. I believe it's also an advantage for us because being Chinoy uh, makes all of us uh, 
aware that we are working together. And of course, since uh, we just came from the pandemic, uh, all of us are working hard to make sure that uh, we all do well in this pandemic and we all uh, do better, especially for the country. For me, a modern Chinoy is uh, a passionate individual, a person that really admires different culture, appreciates what life has to offer. He or she is a positive contributor to society. And so a modern Chinoy really is someone that is a positive thinker, someone that really prioritizes helping the community. Di sa balat, pwedeng irritation yan. Try Silka Green Papaya. Dahil ang tunay na sign ng pagpapaputi, kita in as early as 7 days. Good role model ka. Sign na yan. Silka Green Papaya.